Hello everyone, my name is John Yang. I'm a game designer on Diablo 3. I work on legendary items and class design. I'm here to give you all some stories and developer insights behind 10 of Diablo 3 Reaper Souls, most iconic and well-known items. How they were conceived, how they were designed, how they've changed over time, how they've impacted the game, and as game designers, what our lessons and takeaways from them have been. Now, this talk I originally gave at BlizzCon 2015 last year. We're recording this for those of you who weren't able to attend. To start us off, we have Shard of Hate. Now, what was so special about Shard of Hate? Shard of Hate was an item brainstormed by, voted on, and designed by players in the community in partnership with the development team. It's pretty safe to say that it was near and dear to the hearts of many of us, as we had hoped and intended. The initial response was amazing. The item was super flavorful, the art looked great, it was really powerful, but both we and the players realized that the item was perhaps a little too powerful and the post started rolling in from players. Shard of Hay is overpowered. Nerf it, pronto. So what did we do? Took a look at it and nerfed the crap out of it really quickly. The result was that players with Shard of Hate just locked into the game less powerful than they were the day before. And that feeling always sucks. And to this day is something we try really hard to avoid. Fast forward about a year, after we had released a lot more patches and tons more items for Reaper Souls, we took another look at Shard of Hate. And what did we do? we buffed it back to its original version. Today, this is a list of the most popular weapons for the Barbarian class. Today's usage numbers on the item, as you can see, only about 1% of Barbarians use Shard of Hate. It's a, not a really powerful item anymore. Our takeaways from this? Pretty simple. Maybe things aren't as overpowered as they seem at first. Don't be too hasty to nerf items. Let the game evolve and grow. Maybe everything will be okay. Focus and Restraint. Now this is a set of rings that many of you probably use. They grant two bonuses. One bonus for using a resource generating skill and one bonus for using a resource spending skill. We basically wanted you to use skill builds that alternated between both generating resources and spending resources because we think builds that use a variety of skill types are more fun than just spamming a single button. But here's how the gameplay actually looked. It's two really small five second duration buff on your tiny little buff icons Buff, uh, buff icon slots, your buff bar, and you were just staring at them. You ended up playing your buff bar instead of playing the game. So our takeaway from this is items that reinforce fun builds are great. That's what we want. But UI clutter is really, really bad. We have to weigh the pros and cons. Um, in retrospect, focus or restraint is something that I think we really should have taken a, a harder look at to see if there were other alternatives to making it provide the same gameplay background, but not cause the same UI problems. Furnace. Pretty simple item. Uh, it's also one of Diablo's most powerful and well-known items, weapons among players. Maybe surprisingly, Bludgeon Power is really simple and basic. It gives you bonus damage against elites. What are elites, though? Elites are all of the high, high difficulty hard monsters in the game. They have several times more health and damage of normal basic monsters. How it was designed. So we wanted an item that was good versus elites, and we did some napkin math. We said, okay, you're fighting elites about half the time. Items, other items of similar nature give you about 25% damage at all times, such as Maximus. Maximus. So we said, okay, we'll give you double the usual bonus half the time. But that missed the mark for us, and this is why. Because items that help you when you need it most are really, really powerful. Bosses and elite monsters are most of the challenge in the game. I mean, imagine if you had a spell that said, you can instantly kill any boss in the game, but did nothing against trash and normal monsters. That's probably really good to almost everyone in almost every game. Elemental immunity amulets. There are the five. Uh, the five elements make you immune to one of the each damaging elements in the game. Lightning, fire, arcane, poison, and cold. That sounds amazing, right? We thought so too, but we thought it might be too powerful, maybe too awesome at first. These items were really hotly debated internally, and rightfully so. Before we released them, we weren't sure if it, if it was okay for the game. Monster elemental damage is still the most deadly sources of damage in the game. You know, arcane enchanted, jailer, frozen, stuff like that. Um, this is an example of where finding the right balance for items for us is sometimes really difficult. Is it actually okay for the game to allow a player to be completely immune to a really common damage type such as fire? 
I mean, as you all know, we took a chance and released these items. The, you know, the, I think the, the Rift ecosystem survived. Uh, we really, really like giving players options to defeat certain challenges. You know, a lot of players say, I'm, I'm, I'm a certain class, I'm really weak against this type of monster. Well, here's an option for you. You might be giving up some other bonus like damage, but you can defeat the arcane enchanted jailer monsters if you so choose to. I mean, you have to sacrifice your one and only amulet slot to wear this immunity amulet, and you can't wear more than one at a time anyways, until we made the cube at a later patch. So it wasn't a really huge issue. You still have to deal with all the other elements in the game, as well as physical, which can't be immune. Mortex Brace. Ah, uh, the tale of Mortex Brace. Okay. So we set out originally to design an item that made Wrath of Berserker, the Barbarian class's most powerful 2-minute cooldown ability, better. The design we liked the most was Wrath of Berserker gains, every, gains the effect of every one of its 5 runes. This roughly multiplied the power level of the skill by, let's say, just 5. Separately in that same patch, we had also made an item that allowed Wrath of Berserker, the 2-minute cooldown ability, to last forever, essentially, instead of 20 seconds, effectively removing the cooldown completely. This roughly multiplied the power level of the skill by 5 or 6 again. So we found during testing that these two items while both really awesome and reasonably balanced separately, combined, multiplied together to make the Barbarian class far stronger than we had aimed for. And we eventually pulled Mortex Brace from the drop tables completely before the patch went live. Now, yeah. So our lesson here was we have to take into account the game's overall landscape and be really careful with synergistic items. Now, there are a lot of takeaways from the Mortex Brace incident from a communication standpoint, but I'm here to talk about the design takeaways. And as far as design is concerned, we have to carefully take into account the overall landscape. What other items exist? How do they combine with each other? And class balance is important to us. We don't always hit our mark, but we want, as much as most people, all the classes to be balanced and equally strong. Sanwuko set from patch 2.1. So the Monkey King's Garb, also known as the Sun Wuko set. The intention of the set was for monks to use a basic resource spending attack, such as Wave of Light or Lashing Tail Kick, to spend spirit and generate a decor that generated extra damage for you. Those skills, Wave of Light and Lashing Tail Kick for example, had an animation, so there was a strict limit on how often you could cast them. Naturally, players, monk players, set out to maximize their damage and quickly found that generating and spending as much spirit as fast as possible was the best way to deal maximum damage, completely ignoring those animating skills. So they use skills that skills and items that help you generate nearly infinite spirit, and the fastest way to spend it turned out to be spamming Mantra of Healing, a skill that provided a bonus for a short duration that had no cooldown and no animation. You could push the button multiple times a second and spend tons and tons of spirit. You didn't even need the bonus for you don't you don't even need to push the button more often than, you know, maybe once a second, but players still did it because that was the w best way to maximize damage. Those of you who played Monks in Patch 2.1 know how this turned out. It was really bad. Physical hand pain was the main complaint, and that's a good summary of how this turned out, from spamming Mantra of Healing for so long. Um, we acted pretty quickly, I think, to change this. We changed the bonus from spending spirit generates a decoy that deals damage to instead call out specific resource spending attacks with animations that we intended the set to be used with and tune the damage to compensate. Now, we certainly never hope that our game causes players physical pain, but this just highlighted for us that we need to be really, really careful when designing items and sets. Players will always figure out the optimal playstyles to maximize their effectiveness. And if it happens that the best way to deal damage and survive is something we really don't like or causes physical pain, that's something we need to address and it's all on us to fix. Sever. It's kind of a mysterious power. Here's what it actually does. Uh, the tooltip says, slain enemies rest in pieces. When you deal a killing blow to an enemy, Sever plays a special death explosion visual and deals an additional huge amount of damage because the, the enemy is dead already anyway, so we don't care if we're just doing extra damage to a dead monster. A huge amount of damage was purely intended to be a cosmetic effect because big explosions are cool and huge crit damage numbers are also cool. Players love that. Players, of course, as players will do, 
found an interesting use of this mechanic. Players combine Sever's cosmetic huge damage along with the Demon Hunter ability called Mark for Death, which allows you to take damage that was dealt to one enemy and spread it to all other enemies around them. We had to nerf this combo. Um, we'll call it an unintended use of game mechanics. Our takeaways here. Original intent behind items and mechanics should be clean and clear. Avoid taking shortcuts. If you want something to look good and sound good and give you big damage numbers, just do something cosmetic that doesn't actually have gameplay ramifications because players will always find those creative uses for your mechanics. Shimizu's Haori. Uh, seemingly cool item. The intent was that when you're almost dead, this item kicks into gear and helps you kill enemies by guaranteeing critical hits. Help when you need it most. What players actually did with the item was guaranteed critical hits are awesome. It's a lot of damage. So I'm going to try to maximize it by trying to always stay at low health. But then players got mad when they died. They got mad when they were healed by a health globe. They got mad when they were healed by another player. This was not how the item was intended to be used. On top of that, this is what being at low health looked and sounded like. There was a stressful heart thumping sound and the screen was bright red. Our takeaways from this item, uh, items should reinforce desirable gameplay. Desirable gameplay is are things like, I want to kill a monster, or, or I want to be at full health, or I want my, my teammates to be at full health, I want to heal everybody. That's what we want. We don't want to reinforce, we want to reinforce the natural player's desires instead of rewarding you for undesirable gameplay. That's one of the reasons we don't buff some of the, the items that a lot of people would say are underpowered, such as Shimizu's Haori, um, because we realize the gameplay is not as good as we like. Nagel Ring. Uh, an un unassuming item that summons fallen lunatics. Doesn't tell you anything about the damage. What exactly are fallen lun lunatics? They're these guys. Little explodey guys. This is what they do. They run up to enemies and explode for a thousand percent weapon damage each. Tons of damage. So our problem with this was the item was really cool, but we started dropping it at too low of a level. In this forum post here, you see a player say, I found this Nagel Ring at a really low level, but now I'm just going through the campaign for the first time, and bosses are falling before me. I'm not even getting to fight them. That's, that's no gameplay. That's no fun. Um, it really made the experience, the first time experience of fighting bosses in Diablo 3, really bad for a lot of new players. And the player is right here. Bosses aren't cool and fun. They don't do anything before they die. And on top of that, it's really cool to fight hard bosses for the first time, defeat them, and then later on come back overpowered and completely demolish them. So what we actually changed was, we just made this ring start dropping at a higher level, past the minimum level that you are when you beat the campaign for the first time, so you've had a chance to see all the bosses and their mechanics and defeat them legitimately. We have lots of room to do crazy overpowered items at the end game. Unity. So the Unity Ring was intended to split damage evenly between all players wearing it, essentially reducing the spikiness of incoming damage, but not actually causing players to take any less damage total overall. Separately, we also made this item, uh, or set of items that made your follower helper immortal, because we thought it'd be cool if you never had to worry about your follower, di your follower dying while adventuring. So that, together, this combo made you, the player, just take half damage always, because half your damage was being redirected to your invulnerable follower. Um, this was another one of those cases where we questioned whether it was too powerful at first. You know, the player reaction was, this item really needs to be nerfed. It's too powerful. There were no other items in the game like this. You know, players really hate nerfs, but players really do ask for nerfs a lot, funny enough. Um, of course you have to equip the item. It's the best thing out there. Nothing's even close. And they were right. Our response was, this combo is really powerful, but also really cool. In fact, it's really a good thing that the ring slot has other powerful items to compete with things like Ring of Royal Grandeur and Unity, which at the time were you know, among the, the only good rings in the ring slot. On top of that, the Unity combo took three items to work and only worked in solo play. So we thought, you know what, this is okay. What can we do instead of just nerfing this item? Well, we decided to double down and embrace, embrace the power of the ring slot and make many, many more items uh, as powerful in that slot. You know, these items you see here are from patch 2.4. Um, at the time this was shown, these were new items. 
but other items include Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, Convention of Elements, um, Focus and Restraint. So the ring slot at this point in time, I, I would say is some of the most contentious, one of the most contentious item slots for, your, for players because there are so many powerful items in that slot, and that's good. It's good that you have to choose between many different powerful things and make a hard decision. It's better than there only being a couple powerful choices and the rest just being not as strong. Our takeaway from Unity. Make more powerful, interesting, and desirable items as alternatives and options. Now this is much harder to do and certainly takes much more time and effort, but it's ultimately rewarding. It makes the game a lot better than if we simply took the easy road and just nerfed the few strong, strong powerful items out there to, you know, to maintain balance. You're not choosing to unequip an item because it was nerfed. You're choosing to take it off and you equip something even stronger, even cooler. And that's what Diablo 3 is all about, being overpowered and having powerful items all the time. Thank you.